In this animation, we'll be creating and calling a subroutine using the PLC Logic simulation software package. We will begin with the simple reciprocating timer application used to flash a slot 2 bit 0 indicator. The flash rate is determined by the preset value on the flash on and flash off reciprocating timer elements. Our objective in this exercise will be to add an additional flashing indicator in the slot 4 bit 0 location. This will be done by way of adding a subroutine to the existing mainline program. We will now add the subroutine to our mainline program. To do this, we select main program as it's the location for the new routine. Next, we right click on main program to bring up the contact sensitive pop-up menu. From the menu, we select new routine to bring up the new routine dialog box. We now simply type in the desired subroutine name into the name field located in the new routine dialog box. Once the desired subroutine name has been entered, we click on the OK button to complete the creation of the new subroutine. Our new subroutine now appears in the list of routines available in the main program. Next, double click on the subroutine name to bring up the ladder diagram for population. We can now add our required instructions or elements. Our new subroutine will consist of three rungs, two of which are optional. The SBR instruction and the RET instruction are not required in this instance, but it's a good practice to include them in all subroutines. The single functional rung in our application uses the flash on timer timing bit from the timer located in our mainline program. The timer timing bit is used to turn on the slot 4 bit 0 indicator. With the new subroutine populated, we're ready to return to the mainline program and set up the subroutine call. We will now add a normally open contact used to call the subroutine and the actual JSR jump to subroutine instruction to rung 3 in our mainline application. The desired JSR instruction can be found under the program control tab. We specify the associated subroutine by double clicking on the routine name field in the JSR instruction. Lastly, we will associate the NO contact with the slot 1 bit 1 input location. This location will be used to enable the subroutine during program execution. We'll now take a moment to determine how the output referenced in the subroutine will behave when the subroutine is not part of the program execution. It's important to note that when a subroutine is being executed, the output responds as if it was part of the mainline program. However, when the subroutine is not being executed, any outputs that were active or inactive will remain in their current state until the subroutine is being once again included in program execution. We will now bring up the basic I.O. world and go online to view the application as it is running and verify the behavior. While the application is running we will use the slot 1 bit 1 toggle switch to enable and disable the new subroutine. It is important to note the behavior of the slot 4 bit 0 indicator during both the period when the subroutine is enabled as well as when it's disabled. 